Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're still playing Alan Wake. We're continuing the story where we last left it. And yeah, let's do this. I think we are now halfway. Forget what? The darkness. Where's her face? Be aware of Widowmakers. Be aware of Widowmakers. Damn, this gun is overpowered. I only have three bullets left. Not anymore. Really, give me a flashlight battery. Or a manuscript. Shadow stirred and the wind picked up as I ran through the forest. I felt the dark presence turning its gaze toward me. Then the moonlight was blotted out by dark shadows that raced violently across the ground, moving too swiftly to be natural. Darkness gathered between the trees and melted again to reveal the Taken. No natural path had brought them here. Come on. Okay. Huh. Revolver. I was just over there, I think. I don't really remember. Stay out of sight. I'm on my way. Don't open the door. What am I crazy? Stay hidden. I'll be there soon. Just make sure you keep the lights on. I 
I still had to reach Barry at the cabin, but at least I was out of the woods. Uh, oh, okay, Chainsaw. In the previous video, he said something about that, and then he heard a chainsaw. That was not a chainsaw. Whatever that was, stay away. I have a gun and I'm not afraid to use it. <gasps> I'd have to get the car from the locked garage. It would get me back to Barry faster. And the headlights were a welcome bonus. Oh no. Swing. Come on. I dare you. Swing. Damn. Coward. A story is not a machine that does what you tell it. A story is a beast with a life of its own. You can create it, shape it, but as the story grows, it starts wanting things of its own. Change one thing and you set off a chain reaction of events that spreads through the whole thing. The characters have to be true to themselves. The events need to follow a logic that fits the story. A single flaw and the magic is gone. The story dies. Alice dies. Cool. You can avoid nature and yourself. For anything else? Nope. Just a car. Am I going to drive or is the story going to drive? I'm going to drive! This is fun. Hey! Hold down X to boost the light. Can I, oh, I can exit the car? You know, there's a whole lot of stuff that I probably missed. But we're not gonna go back for it because why would we? We have a freaking car. I can just ram him. Not that way. Oh no. Oh, thank you. I wanna leave a car. This sucks. The flare gun was probably the best weapon I could imagine against the dark things I was facing. This isn't the lodge. It's the next one more uphill. It was the kidnapper. You son of a bitch! Where's my wife? Enough horseplay, wake! You deliver the manuscript and you can have your woman back. Simple as that. I don't listen. Listen. 
I'm gonna need time to finish it. I still need to write the ending. I need a week. It's not done. I need a week. Two days. The old Bright Falls coal mine is nearby. You can find it easy, city boy. The main building, there at noon. You bring the manuscript, you get your wife. If not, well, uh, get me. Yes, yes, I, I get you. Barry had talked about birds over the phone. Darkness controls the Taken. I, I have flares. Okay, I do not have flares. I thought I had. Episode, man. Yeah. I sent Barry to the town to ask around about a man fitting the kidnapper's description. He'd go through the archives of the local paper. Perhaps he could learn something. Anything about the island and the cabin that had disappeared. The man wanted a manuscript. I had to try to write him one to get Alice back. For me, the supernatural had always been nothing but a metaphor for the human psyche, a tool to use in writing fiction. Now, it was happening for real, and I couldn't put a single word on paper. Yeah. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. See you soon. Dude. Have a great day. Hope you come back soon. How do you... To the old Good girl. How are you not here? That's not her. She's being controlled. What the hell?
previously on Alan Wake. I probably have to skip that because copyright. Oh, this is now what episode four? The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline is in two days. I found Mr. Wake's pages. Good girl. How Episode how three, halfway. Anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay, I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? Help you folks. Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trail. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and, get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer, but I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. Yeah, how about that? It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. Okay. Barbara Jagger drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook store. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Okay. Come on, swing. Swing. This is moving really slow, and I'm getting tired. Move! This here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Welcome to... to... Oh dear. Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Please, come in. <laughs> I don't trust you. Hey, this is really good. Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry. She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's... Oh. Barry! 
What? What? skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. Turn the light on. Who's that? Back to work, boy. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. Zane? The genre yeah. of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. Cool. Rose took a day from me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What can I get you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. First refill is free. Leave. Milk and sugar on the counter there. Would you like to hear today's special? Thank you. Have a nice day. Come back soon. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile. Whew. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart ass sidekick, looked like <laughs> and they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Oh really? Now he thinks like we did something. What the hell? Um Are you gonna move for me now? Nope. Oh yeah, I have nothing. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once, once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. all Here's a thermos. Hermus. However you say that. I don't even remember how much of that I have. Oh, you're gonna get it now. knows what you've done to that poor girl this is agent nightingale fbi get him up hemingway you're under arrest you move a muscle i'll unload right in your goddamn face stay right where you are Blaine. what Why have they have to be? I hated to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Who
I can't run, I can't run. You know what, I'm just gonna stroll. <laughs> We're not even trying. I know it's an old game, but come on. Pick this up. And let's quickly. The darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the writer on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Damn it. At least the sheriff is kind of on our side. But this FBI guy is a real douchebag. Everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Who is this FBI guy? Like, why does he want to kill us? He doesn't know us, he doesn't know what we did, he just wants to kill us. What the hell? Now that's a corrupt cop. Yeah, that's probably even the chopper. The damn a-hole. Oh, where are you going after? Number one. Uh, this is James Mulligan Thornton. Come in, over. Uh, Thornton here. Uh, James, we got both Wheeler and Rose in custody. <laughs> they didn't put up a fight or anything. Why they were? Hey, what are you doing? Come on. Sit down and give me that. James Mulligan here. Over. Uh, go ahead, Mulligan. Over. Uh, we got Wheeler and Rose here. 
Wheeler's drunk or hopped up on something. Speaking of which, that fed had a pretty distinctive whip of load of scotch about him, if you know what I mean. Over. Uh, I don't have anything on that, Deputy Mulligan. Over. Well, whatever. Anyway, Rose is just being placed here. here. You better get talking to the bank before you close. Over. I could see the lights at the radio station in the distance. How do I... Why isn't I supposed to come up here? I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. I hope we don't have to fight anybody because never mind. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without a fight. We don't have guns or a flashlight. We or not. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Do this now for what an hour. Point reached. Okay. I'm gonna try with a few minutes I have to get over there. Uh, probably not the best. Oh, yeah, no, we're gonna have to fight. to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. Team one, come in. Over. Yeah, we're halfway through the game. I don't think there, there's like an upgrade system in this game. And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. It's Milt Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milt? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard Thank you. I didn't think there was gonna work touched by the dark presence rose was lost in a dreamland where everything was drawn in black and gray crayons the old lady had promised her that all her wishes would come true she would be alan wake's muse she was smiling so hard it hurt her face she crushed a bottle full of sleeping pills into the coffee deep down inside she was screaming in terror
not do that. Okay. Um, we'll continue in the next episode from here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.